right, good afternoon. It's a beautiful fall day here in Connecticut. Most of the leaves are gone, but it's nice and warm. Good day to get ready for winter. So I'm going to blow some air through the water lines on my uh, 2018 Keystone Cougar 22 RBS. Get it ready for winter. And a little later, another day when I get some antifreeze, I'll uh, pour some down the traps and I'll actually flush a few gallons, pump it through with the water pump just to make double sure. You don't have to do that. Some people do, some people don't. So uh, what I've done to prepare is I've drained my tanks, my black water, gray water tank, drained the fresh water tank. I got my air compressor set up here, just a little uh, Harbor Freight three gallon compressor. I do about 50 pounds or so. And I've got the hot water heater drained. I pulled the plug on that. And it's all nice and green. There's the plug with the anode attached. That's two years old, so I still got plenty of life. It takes a one and a sixteenth inch socket to get that out. And make sure I got the, uh, you got a little switch on mine. It's an on-off switch for the AC uh, heating element if you're plugged into shore power, which I'm not. Uh, but you want to make sure that either that's turned off here or I have it turned off on my control panel up inside and I'm not plugged in anyways but before you drain the water out of your hot water tank make sure you have no power going to the heating element or you'll burn it out. I used a um, this little uh, adapter connection you can hook the air hose right onto here this screws in to your uh, water connections on the side of the trailer. That way you can hook the air hose on, you don't have to hold on to it. I have a quick disconnect fitting screwed on here. <clears throat> and over here, I have my uh, water pressure regulator. I made sure that's nice and dry. It's been sitting out here for a couple weeks without any water in it and I shook it and blew it and you don't want that to be full of water and sitting there and freeze. I got my black tank flush connection here. Yeah, I told you it was a beautiful day, the motorbikes are out. And the city water connection here. So I'll plug this into the uh, black tank flush first and I'll put some air through there and blow that out a little bit. I'll be right back. All right, I've got the airline hooked up. A little air through there that'll flush out all the water in your black tank flush connection and your anti-siphon check valve that's located under your bathroom sink so it doesn't freeze up. Or it might be located, depends on your rig. Mine was located under the bathroom sink. And uh, let's blow that line out into the black tank, make sure there's no water in, the, in there to freeze up. Only takes a few seconds. I'm going to pause and uh, hook up to the city water now. Alright, I've finished the black tank. Uh, before I hook up the city water connection, I'm going to uh, put the plug back in the uh, hot water tank. I leave the hot water tank in service, normal, not bypassed. And I use it as a 6 gallon air tank, basically. So I have a 6 gallon and a 3 gallon. It gives me 9 gallons of air, so I got lots of capacity. So I'm going to go ahead and put the plug in. Start pressurizing the system up and then we'll blow things down. Alright, I've been pumping up for a while. So we've got the uh, air hose hooked up to the city water connection. This uh, three way valve is for city water. I'm going to flip it just for a few seconds. That blue water into the uh, fill line that goes into the fresh water tank. Make sure that line is clear. <clears throat> The outside shower, I've got it hooked up here. So we'll just open that. I've already blown a little air through it, so there's not much water in that. And the hot water side, pretty good. Now I'm going to go around the inside and we'll do the inside. 
I may forget to mention that I did put the uh, anode and the hot water tank drain plug back in and now it's pressurizing with air that gives me a good surge volume if you've got a nice big compressor at home you don't need it but this little thing doesn't do much so we'll come in here I've got the uh, kitchen sink here cold side and the hot side I've already blown some air through here so a lot of the water has already been blown out toilet the bathroom sink See, a lot of water still on there. Hot and cold side. And the shower. much it. You just keep going around and doing that until you're satisfied you got most of the water out. Now, the one thing this doesn't do, and I'll show you, this is uh, my water pump set up. It's different from most people's because I moved it all around, but your water pump's going to be sitting down here. There's the uh, winterizing connection where I can pump in the uh, antifreeze there. You got your suction strainer, and the pump comes out goes around so this section from the uh, the suction line of the pump down into the fresh water tank and then through the pump and back out to where the city water line connects that part doesn't get blown out with water or air so there's still water in there so if you're not gonna flush antifreeze you want to unscrew that little filter housing there make sure there's water no water in there drain that all out and you might even want to pulse the pump a few times there is a check valve inside this pump, so the discharge side will still be full of water. Uh, if you post that pump, it might blow some air through there and clear it out. Like I said, I'm going to pump a few gallons of antifreeze through here, so I don't have to worry about that. And that's pretty much it. That's how I do it. Everybody does it differently, but that's my method, and uh, it seems to work. I've been doing it for many, many years. It takes a little time, but that's okay. Any questions, let me know.